Cypress is an end-to-end -end testing library that will change your life as a developer. I say that because it allows you to speed up the testing process of the user experience, and it will help you catch bugs that you didn't even know existed. It's super easy to set up, and the learning curve is very minimal. So if you have an existing app, I recommend that you follow along with this episode in your own project to see what I mean firsthand. If you're new to the channel, make sure to like and subscribe, and you can find the source code at angularfirebase.com. In case you're not familiar, end-to-end -end testing is the process of loading up your web application in the browser and testing things as if it was a real user performing these actions, such as clicking buttons, filling out forms, and things like that. So if you're an Angular developer, you might already know that Angular ships with its own end-to-end -end testing library called Protractor. So why do we need Cypress? The short answer is that Cypress just provides a better developer experience, but the longer answer is that Protractor was originally developed for AngularJS, and it just hasn't evolved the way Cypress has. First of all, Cypress provides a really nice DSL for writing expressive end-to-end -end test, which we'll see in the code here coming up. Then it provides this really nice test runner, which is an Electron app that will run your app in the browser and then give you time travel debugging capabilities for each spec. So for every action that takes place in the app, it will save a snapshot of the state as well as an image of the UI. So you know how things change before and after some action took place. And in my experience, writing a really good test suite is much more effective at preventing bugs than using a state management library like Redux or something along those lines. For this project, I'm going to be starting from the Firestarter demo app, which already has user authentication and a Firestore database feature implemented in it. Over the next few minutes, we'll test that the user can sign up, log out, log back in, create some items in the database, and do a few other things in between. The first thing we need to do is install it with npm install cypress save dev. Then I'm also installing a library called chance, which we'll use to generate random fixtures for our specs. I have completely removed Protractor from this project, and I'm going into the package JSON and changing the end-to-end -end script to say Cypress open. Now you can run this script from the command line, and it will take you through a series of steps to set up Cypress in your project. I also highly recommend that you link your GitHub project to it, because you can actually record your tests and then save them in the cloud. Recordings are great for your own reference, but they're even better if you have clients that want to see the user experience happen step by step. When you finish the setup, you'll see a few new things in your project. Cypress JSON holds your global configuration options. Then all of your testing code is in the Cypress directory. You can set up your specs to run on TypeScript, but I don't see much benefit in doing that because you can pull in the types in just a plain JavaScript file as well. You'll notice four different files here. Fixtures hold default data that you want to reuse throughout your tests. Then integration is where you write your main specs. That's where we'll spend most of the time here. You can also write plugins that hook into different lifecycle events in the testing process. One example would be transpiling your code to TypeScript if you decide to use TS. And then you have a support directory where you can write your own custom commands for Cypress or overwrite existing commands. We'll do this later in the video. At this point, I just want to jump into writing our first test because it's really easy to do. I've created a file called samplespec.js in the integration folder. Then I'll reference the types so we can get really good tooling and autocomplete in our plain JavaScript file. And I'll also bring in chants so we can automatically generate email addresses and text and things like that. At this point, it's important to point out that Cypress uses Mocha and Chai as its underlying test libraries. So you can't really use Jest or Jasmine as far as I know, but this doesn't really matter because you'll mostly be using the Cypress API to write your specs. The first step is to describe the test suite, which we'll call Firestarter. And then I'll set a couple global variables here. One is for an email address that will be randomly generated for each time this test runs. And then another one for the password. The state does not get reset between each test. So if you want to go back to the homepage, for example, you can set up a before each callback to redirect the user back to the homepage, which we can do with sci.visit and the URL. Before we get started testing anything complex, let's just make sure we can find some text within the rendered page. Calling cycontains will look for that text in the page, and that's all you need to write to test that that content is in the page. But you can also write more traditional test code where you explicitly declare your subject, for example, if we expect to, to equal to. I very rarely write tests like this in Cypress, but I just want you to know that it's possible. So if we look at the spec, you can see it first ran our before each callback, then it lets us know whether our test passed or failed, and if we hover over the contains, it will highlight where it found that text in the page. In this particular app, I have router guard set up to block certain routes if an unauthenticated user tries to access them. In this next spec, I'll show you how to navigate around the app and then verify that that particular route gets blocked. 
This app has a dropdown on mobile layouts, so we need to make sure that the actual link that we want to click is visible on the page before we try to click it with Cypress, which in this case means clicking the element that has an ID of nav toggle. To do that, we can call Cypress get along with a selector, which works very similar to jQuery. The get method is very powerful, and you'll be using it frequently in Cypress. So once we click that button, the page then should contain the words Firestore, and then we'll go ahead and click on that link, which should normally bring us to the Firestore page. However, it's currently blocked by a router guard, so it should show a notification message that that user is not authorized to visit that page. In this app, I have a notification message component, which I can grab, and then I'll get the children elements from that component. And somewhere inside those DOM elements, we should have the text, you must be logged in. This should method is super powerful in Cypress. You can chain it onto any element that you've grabbed to make assertions about it. For the first argument, you can chain assertions together. Then the second argument is optional and is the value that you want to compare. What's really nice is that we can chain multiple assertions together by using AND. For example, this text might be contained in the DOM, but we also want to make sure that it's visible to the user, which we can do by asserting that the notification message should be visible. If you uncomment the cy.pause line of code that I have at the top of the spec, it'll allow us to go through each item step by step. So with that one line of code, we can just click the next button up here at the top, and it will take us through each step and show us where the UI is being clicked and what is happening in response. When it clicks the button, it will navigate to a new URL, and then you'll see it asserts that that notification message has the corresponding text. So now let's go ahead and sign up a new user. And we'll do this with email passwords, so we actually have to type into a form. The first thing we'll do is click the toggle button and then click the login link. Then we'll make sure that that takes the user back to the URL page, which we can do with Cypress URL and then a should assertion. Now a best practice I'd like to point out is that you should generally avoid using IDs or CSS classes to select elements from the DOM. That'll make your test brittle because those things are likely to change. A better approach is to use a data attribute or the actual component name itself. In this case, I'm using the name attribute on an input element, which is very unlikely to change in most cases. Then if you remember earlier, we set up a global email address, so I can simply type that email address into the form with the type operator. I'll do the same thing for the password, then find the submit button and click it. Then we can verify that we have this new user, and we could even verify things in local storage, but for now we'll just make sure that it has the right message in the page, and then from there we'll go ahead and log the user out so we can log them back in in the next step. When we time travel through the spec, you can see that it's actually typing in the randomly generated email address into the form input. And then it highlights the submit button with a red dot, shows you that it gets clicked, and then it navigates back to the new page with the proper message displayed. Then you'll also see all of the asynchronous XHR requests that Firebase is making with the identity toolkit to log in the user. The next thing I want to do is show you how to extend Cypress with your own custom method. So let's imagine we often need to log in the user to do something in our app. Instead of repeating our test code over and over again, I'm going to create a login method that we can reuse throughout our test suites. We will go into the support folder and then into commands and then call cypress commands add. The second argument is just a function that will run the steps needed to execute this command. In most cases, you'd probably want to log the user in programmatically, but in this case, we'll just go ahead and have the user click different UI elements until they're logged into their account. So what we've really done is just created a helper method that we can use in our specs to keep them concise and readable. So getting back to our main spec now, we can log the user in that we just logged out in the previous spec, and then do whatever else we need to do with the logged in user. The bottom line is it's just a really convenient way to share code throughout your tests. There's so much more you can do with Cypress that I'll have to make a whole nother video about more advanced concepts. Again, the API is really well documented and intuitive, so I recommend that you give it a try. I've been using it for the last few weeks, and it's completely changed the way that I do end-end -end testing in Angular. I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up there. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you're ready to start building a serious app, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get access to all kinds of exclusive content designed to get your app into production faster. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.